never a dull moment in the orchid hobby, I swear. Ah, good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, or good evening, but thank you for being here, whatever time of day it may be when you're watching this video. For me, it's good morning, and I woke up to this. Ah, that's where my popcorn haruri is supposed to hang overnight. And, uh, ooh, we got away with this one. It is now down there. <laughs> ah, right. I guess we're going to have to address this. I got very lucky. I have to say I got very lucky. Not a spike was broken on that fell. And the other spike in the back there is still intact. Let's have a look, see about my little rescue mission here for my Dendrobium tangerinum. I, 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 oh, there they are. <laughs> They're okay. They're okay. Oh, poor little guys. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, and my little Haruri. Ah, we're going to address this. It has to be done now. From the winter storm, snapping off the top growth that is still in bloom for now. It's really, really time to address this little mount situation here. And I'm not surprised, I guess. I had nicked the top part of this mount a little bit with the secateurs. So I'm not surprised that it snapped. It is a placemat after all. It's, <laughs> it's not UV friendly, I guess. <laughs> okay, let's take care of this poor little thing. It's trying so hard to do well for me. We'll give it a proper, proper secure setup. We are in luck to get this show on the road. Oh, wow. <laughs> right. First things first, let me get this label off. And you see how brittle that was. Oh, wow. Okay, no wonder it fell. And secondly, I'm going to be using fishing line for this project. I was considering zip ties, but I think that the orchid itself is a little bit too fine around the base in order to secure it properly with just zip lines. I'm going to remove her first and then explain because maybe you are new to my channel, maybe you're watching something like this on my channel for the first time and are wondering what on earth is going on. Eonopsis popcorn haruri. At the beginning of 2020, I remossed everything that needs and has sphagnum moss around the base. And then I do that like oh, every six months because I don't like the look of sphagnum moss on the outside. But you can see that the inside, there's nothing really wrong with it. Having said that, there was also an inspired thought from Michael McCarthy, Scotch Bright or Scrubby Pads, as opposed to EpiWeb, which I never bought because it was so expensive. And I rolled with that idea. I thought it was inspired, it was genius, and I was so happy because I grow as inorganic as I possibly can. And I don't want to be doing this mossing business for the rest of my life. So what I did was then already sewed on a scrubby pad at the back of the mount that I would like to keep because this has not deteriorated. It was just the top part, so I might be able to save it. And I was thinking, what if the roots would grow into the scrubby pad and then I could just peel off the moss and sub substitute sphagnum moss with this fluffy hob material here. Hob filter. And without disturbing the orchid from the mount, well, as you can see, the orchid had a little bit of an accident this morning. So plans are out the window. I'm going to have to disturb it more than I want. And I will be taking off this sphagnum moss, removing the orchid entirely. See how bad the break is in here. And then also <laughs> take advantage of repositioning her down low. Because Another really weird thing that I have is, for some reason, 
I, I don't. Well, I seem to think I need to center my orchids on the mounts, and it just it's just not the right way to do it. Get it as low as possible. And as this one is has a climbing nature, you know, let it climb up the mount. <laughs> so I'm going to take advantage of that at this point in time as well. So what I'm seeing here is actually got some really, really nice roots, which because I'm not going to be using more organic media around the roots, I am actually going to not fiddle too much, preserve the roots that I have as best as possible, and then try to get her down to lower, a bit lower on the mount. I'm just going to take my time fiddling with this. There will be timestamps in the description if you prefer to jump ahead. So you can see that I had to compromise one root, which two roots actually, which in future I will not be needing to do because I have no intention of moving this orchid from this mount ever again. I will be mounting on mounting on mounting should I be so lucky to get this one to grow like a weed. But you can see that these fine roots easily penetrate and go through the scrubby pad with hardly any resistance at all. I call them Ninja Orchids root grade scale. These are roots, size one, perfect for a regular green scrubby pad. They can take it. And here we have my little Eonopsis. And I'm going to show you how I was trying to grow it before. And then the climbing habit made that impossible, added to the fact that I have hardly any humidity during the summer. And its growth pattern, it made me have to spray it far too much to my liking than I would be comfortable with, even though it is hot in the summer, because the apexes of the new growths are so delicate and tiny that I yeah, I wasn't going to risk it and I was always a little bit apprehensive about how much I can spray it. But what is left of this sphagnum moss is going to stay. Because I have a beautiful little root network already going in the moss that's there. This will eventually degrade and fall apart. I'm going to leave it because actually I have two pieces here and they've already intertwined. You can see I have a new growth coming there and I cut spikes off to make my life easier. Normally, that's why I was waiting for this one. It had finished blooming. I want the orchid to absorb the spike on its own, but to make the process easier for them remounting, instead of catching myself on the spikes, I cut them off. It gives her an opportunity to recover as well. So there's two pieces, possibly three, because this one is quite loose after the storm. But I'm going to maintain this as it is and remount it on the same mount. We'll do a little bit of orchids and crafts. And then I'm going to add the white hob material around it as opposed to this sphagnum moss in the hopes that it's going to be super happy has a lot of humidity around it and any future roots can just romp away. So it looks like there's a lot of sphagnum moss left in here. I'm not so concerned. It is a thirsty orchid. You can see how desiccated some of the back bulbs are. They're quite desiccated, so I'm going to give it a little bit more of what it needs in order for it to thrive. Using the same mount, 
I'm leaving this in the back as my humidity buffer so I can always spray from the back and keep the orchid happy during the winter without addressing the front and compromising possible new growths. And this was brittle, is not anymore. So I'm going to maintain my diagonal hang orientation and my next hook will go in here, which in this case I will do afterwards because I don't want the hook catching while I work. So first things first, let's get ourselves a fishing line tied around the back. Please excuse the dogs. There's a battle of the hierarchies going on in this household. And I'm quite happy about it because it sounds to me like Baloo is claiming territory and teaching King what is and isn't acceptable. I only intervene if it gets a little bit out of hand. So I'm sorry for the growling in the background. There's nothing going on. No dogs are getting hurt in the process. I need King to step up into his role. And you could hear that little squeal. Yeah. All right. Let's sew. Next step, here we go. My hob material, my orchid is secure. Woohoo! Almost inorganic, but that's fine. At least I'm going to be able to protect the roots that have grown. And now, just like with before, instead of the sphagnum moss there, I'm going to apply my hob filter. And depending on what the orchid needs, I could go with the whole thick layer all in one go. Or what I'm going to do initially is just add what I believe she needs also because of the time of year. And if that is enough for the summer, then great. I won't have to bother her again. And if it's not enough for the summer, no problem. I can always sew on a little bit more. And that's all I'm trying to achieve here is to have an orchid happy in the certain setup and not bother them that much, especially the mounts. And not having sphagnum moss is the first step to achieving that. So I bought myself some new fishing line, which is much smaller gauge by accident. There was no rhyme or reason as to why. I just looked at the fishing line and thought, okay, no, that, that'll do, that's fine. So again, just secure. One starting end. I don't need this long. And let's hope we don't get all knotted up and tangled up. And like a little bit of a cushion, go in and secure the hob material to the back, either to this scouring pad or to the mount structure, just in certain little targeted areas I hope all this is on camera. <laughs> so that it doesn't go anywhere. Now, there will be algae buildup. 
this is exactly the same kind of thing that needs to be taken into consideration, like with sphagnum moss. I don't mind algae. I do mind salts. But from the behavior of the past, of this hob material, from what I've recognized, that is not a problem at all. The only difference is it will go green at one point, and I hope it doesn't go slimy. And if it goes slimy, that I can really blast it with a very strong jet from my sprayer to dislodge it. Only time will tell. But one thing is for sure, I am not dealing with sphagnum moss on mounts anymore, unless in the event of an emergency. I'm not dissing sphagnum moss. It's just not something I want to keep doing twice a year. For any emergency, sphagnum moss is the best. And I'm testing hob material for my rescue foul pieces that I'm trying to root in. As opposed to sphagnum moss, which can get slimy, then you have to bother the, the orchid again, and all that funny business. I'll show you in another video my little ICU setup with the hob material. And as I use Lekka a lot, it is abrasive to the roots, which again makes them stop growing and all that. So there's a little bit of testing going on. Now I have this flap here that's still unruly, so we're gonna go back, but from the other side, we're gonna come in from the other side and make that little flap come down and do what we want it to do. With one little stitch. And that's all I'm going to do for this one. That's perfect. Where did we come out? I keep myself a little loop here. Come through. Once, twice, and pull. But that would be my orchid pretty much secure. If I in any way find this is going to get loose, then I'm going to get uh, some hot glue further down the line and just apply a dollop of hot glue to that knot. But I don't think I'm going to need it. And that's it. My little popcorn Haruri has graduated to inorganic. Woohoo! Not quite it though. The hook. So, this old tag from Schwerter actually is a little bit used and abused. But I have my reasons for keeping the Schwerter tags as is. They're not my personalized ones. And that's how it's going to stay for a little bit. Let's see if we can get a centered hole in there. There we go. And we said we're going to go down one, not on the flimsy part that might perpetuate the next problem. And then make a hook. And hopefully it doesn't fall apart right where I want it. That, that is what I like to see. And for future reference, on a gloomy day, I spray from the back. Very hot, sunny summer's day. I can go all ninja, but I can target just the hob material with my sprayer. And that holds a lot, a lot of water and the back supports with a lot of, lot of humidity. This is now officially a Ninja and Michael Mount hybrid. I love it. And I hope that you got inspired by this 
enjoyed the video, watched a little bit of orchids and crafts. <laughs> I appreciate having had you here, having been able to talk to you and talk you through what was not planned for today at all, but here we are. Thank you very, very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.